What's up everyone? Welcome back to our aviation ABC. Today it's time for letter G and we chose landing gear. If you've ever wondered why landing gears are tilted, forward, backward, whatever, well then this video is going to be for you because we're going to cover that to a later point. But before we start, be sure to smash that like, subscribe and set the bell. Let's get started. First of all, you have to know there are many different types of landing gears like skis, monoreels, floats, etc. Which gear is used depends on the use case of the aircraft. Does it land on snow? Does it land on water? Etc. For today's video, we're gonna stick with airliners. Who would have thought that? Anyways, <laughs> so how is a landing gear unit built? Well, we could go really deep now and talk about all the different components like retraction actuators, rotation actuators, the shock strut, etc. But that would probably be a bit boring and take quite a while. So we're sticking with the basics here. The wheels are fitted on an axle beam, looking like that. There can be two wheels, four wheels, six wheels, depends on the type of aircraft. The axle beam assembly is connected to the aircraft by a strut. They can be quite huge. The strut is one of the most important things on the gear because it's got to withstand all the energy on touchdown, all the load. There are different kinds of struts, for example, the rigid strut. You won't find that on modern airliners because all the load is directly transferred into the fuselage of the aircraft. So the rigid strut is most likely found on older and smaller aircrafts. Then there's the steel strut or spring steel strut. Absorbs some forces and gives the rest into the fuselage. And then there's the roller drums, the Oleo pneumatic shock absorber strut. That doesn't sound fancy, I don't know what does. Well, and that's the thing we have on modern airliners. I don't know why I'm standing up like that. <laughs> kind of aggressive here right now. <laughs> no, that's the thing for modern aircrafts. Why? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm really happy you asked. Because it absorbs the main part of the load during a landing. But how does it work? Well, we're gonna keep it simple here. So we've got an outer cylinder and a thinner one, which is in the middle, inner one. The outer one is filled with nitrogen, the inner one is filled with hydraulic fluid, like oil. Coming down for landing now, no, that wouldn't fly like that. Anyways, coming down for landing on touchdown, the inner cylinder is pushed into the outer cylinder filled with nitrogen, the inner one is filled with oil, and in that moment the oil provides the damping and the nitrogen on the outer one provides the spring force. And that will then absorb the bulk of the load, basically, to keep it simple here. So we're gonna leave it here. I think that's enough uh, about shock absorption. That sums up the most important parts of the landing gear, the strut and the axle beam with the wheels, brakes, etc. One really important thing to not forget here is uh, our air to ground sensor, which is most of the time fitted to the gear. This may vary from aircraft to aircraft, but on most airlines, the plane sensors ground with the shock absorber being compressed and sensors flight with the shock absorber being extended, so not any weight on there. That sensing of uh, ground and air is uh, mode is really important for us because, for example, when coming in for landing and the shock absorber is being compressed, so it sends us ground, that allows us then the use of reverse thrust, auto brake, auto deployment, de deployment of spoilers, or the speed brakes, and um, various other things. So the sensing of air ground is really important for us. But how do we actually know in the cockpit that our gear is extended and downlocked, so safe to land? Well, we have indications in the cockpit, right over our landing gear lever for each gear. In transit, they illuminate red. As soon as they are down, downlocked, they go green. They turn green. Green is good, good to land. But what if we have a hydraulic problem, for example, and the normal gear extension is not working anymore? Since our landing gears are really heavy, they are operated by our, by our hydraulic systems. If that fails, we have a thing called gravity gear extension. In the Boeing, it was right behind us on the floor, like that little handle you just pull, like uh, turning on a lawnmower. Is the lawnmower correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, lawnmower. Lawnmower. On the Airbus, it's right below our main landing gear lever. Obviously, a guarded one. Once we use that gravity gear extension, we won't be able to get it back up again and also the doors will be opened. So in case of a go around, we have to think about when we're flying to an alternate about the increased fuel consumption because the doors with the gear and everything down, 
and unretractable, we have a lot more drag and a lot more fuel we need. Just a little side note there. So to conclude today's topic, you remember at the beginning I uh, asked you why are there tilted gears out there? Well, I'm gonna give you a minute here to think about it. It's not, it's pretty easy actually the answer. So pause the video here, think about it, and now let's get back to it. So why are gears tilted? They can be tilted backwards, forward, slightly backwards, slightly forward, whatever, you name it. 747 for example, the outer ones, they look quite steep. And that, the only reason, or except for one aircraft, the main reason for all the other aircrafts is space. Because aircrafts get bigger and bigger and bigger. So heavier. Heavier, we need more wheels <laughs> and uh, more landing gears in total. But the thing is, the big aircrafts, they want to go far. So we need more fuel. Fuel needs to be in tanks. So we need space for tanks. We've got our wings full with tanks, but we've got center tanks as well. And they, they got to be fitted with the gear in the belly. And that's why the brilliant idea of tilted landing gears come in handy. Because then you can tilt them up and as soon as they retract, they can be better fitted to the middle ones and the outer ones, whatever, how many gears you have. So the main reason is to save space. It's easy as that. Let me know in the comments down below if you guessed it right or if you knew it already. I would say that sums up landing gear. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.